Hello and welcome to another episode of Tan Pants. We have each researched uh, a random topic, and we're just gonna we're gonna shed some light on it today. And we all, hope that you are entertained. We're all gonna talk about some random crazies. That's right. We hope you learn something. I hope I learn something. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, I heard it's always good to start with a joke. That's great. Anyways, so have you heard about that Dave Chappelle? <laughs> yeah, Dave Chappelle. He he told Dave the Chappelle. trans joke. Yeah, and they. What I've was not the heard what the was joke. the joke? I want to hear the joke, listeners. I don't know the joke. Oh man! All I hear is Dave Chappelle blah, 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 blah. transphobic. He's mean. And I, I've not. I didn't know who Dave Chappelle was. I I'm haven't heard dark. the joke. You know, I don't know what's. What are you guys talking about? Josh doesn't know. So uh, there is this comedian named Dave Chappelle. Okay. Right. He has a comedy routine. And Netflix, one of the things they do because they're like, we're running out of things to get out. They quickly yeah. film a stand-up routine sometimes. Okay. And it was an hour of, you remember we, we, we used to get those uh, Tim Hawkins comedy DVDs? Yeah. We're yeah. just like, just an hour and 50 minutes of yeah, him get doing stand-up. I get that. That's great. So, yeah, they're fun. Uh, Netflix does that with different comedians. So Dave Chappelle's show, he had some. He had a routine where he's talking about trans people and how stupid and silly that is. Yeah. And he's poking holes at it. He's poking fun at it, you know? And uh, everyone's calling for his head. Everyone wants him dead and fired and <laughs> dead. Okay, these uh, the, the, a 1,000 people at Netflix, they, they did a walkout. They walked out of the... Yeah, they're because they're like, you got to take down all the Dave Chappelle stuff. But Netflix is like, no, we have a backlog of like a million people who want to work here. You're easily replaceable. Oh, <laughs> well, wow. Maybe not in That's this right. market right now, you know? So wait, does does Netflix want to take down Dave Chappelle's stuff? No, it's their content. People are watching oh, it. So it's Netflix more popular is, than ever. Everyone's yeah. watching it now. Yeah. Okay. And it's only a couple people who are angry, on, angry online. Well, what was the joke? I don't, I don't know. know. I, I, can, can we look it up? It I might. Like it might it. I'm it trying might be. to, but I got. I got no internet. It's probably a dirty joke. The walkout failed. Yeah. Netflix was just like no. No. And then the person that organized it, they were just like, "You're fired." Yeah. Get out of here. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you're ugly. <laughs> if you tried to attack your own, and you're kind of smelly. They're saying it's not because of that, but I mean, come on. It's kind of big. I mean. Like, yeah, we already noticed that you were really angry in the workplace, yelling at other people, and this walkout thing yeah. you staged with all your angry friends is kind of like, yeah, we're, uh, how about you go work at Disney? I bet Disney <laughs> really needs some yeah. people right but now. But imagine, like, there's going to be a layoff pretty soon, probably, and coincidentally, those 1,000 people might find their name on that list. Yeah, I mean, if, if you're running a company and you have, like, a bunch of people having an irrational response to something and they're trying to dictate how you run your company, that's unhealthy. You can't have that kind of uh, antagonistic spirit in your workplace. I mean, I know it's Netflix. Netflix is probably not the most wholesome place to work anyway. Yeah, Netflix nope. is probably a really bad company. <laughs> they, uh, what was that? They, that movie Cuties? Yeah, yeah. They made that one movie that was like really, really inappropriate. Like, yeah, they were trying to sexualize children. Yeah, it was pretty bad. Yeah, I, mm. I canceled Netflix after that. Yeah, I didn't have Netflix, like I didn't have a subscription before that, and then I heard about that, and then that just like reconfirmed my non-subscription status. All right, I got the joke now. Oh okay, I think I think I know what it is. He mentions this somebody called the baby. The guy killed someone, like shot and killed someone at Walmart. Put them in a bag. And got away with it, didn't hurt his career, but if you make fun of a gay man, that was one of them, and I think the other one... Oh, that was just kind of like a, a, oh, a yeah. point he made? Point. Yeah. Another huh. one was, he was saying, hey, everyone's come, come out of a woman when they were born, not a man. That's right. And so then he made a, like... Wait, these aren't jokes, these are just, just saying. Facts. He's just saying <laughs> things that are true. He compared, like, trans people don't like TERFs. You know what that is? Don't like no. what? A trans exclusionary radical feminist. Oh, whatever. So what? it's it's someone who's like whatever that means. They're like, hey, this space is for women, not transgender people. Oh, yeah, 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 okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. And so he's like, hey, you know, I don't like it when a white guy has blackface. So maybe, 
you know, <laughs> nice. it's the same thing. <laughs> so th- that's the jokes he made. Oh, wow. Okay. And, and they want to cancel Jave. They want Jave. They want to cancel Dave, Dave Chappelle for those aren't even, those are just common sense things that everyone should, should understand. Well, he probably said them kind of like this. I saw one, uh, person put a picture out of, uh, the uh, Rotten Tomatoes score of Dave Chappelle's show. Mm-hmm. And on the left side, you have the critic rating. It's like at 2%. Everyone's giving Negative horrible, five. Yeah, uh, horrible reviews. And the other side is the audience rating. The audience's yeah. rating is like at like 95. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> so everyone loves it, but all the critics, like they have they have right. to say they hate it or they'll lose their job as, right. as a critic. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. That's been, it's been that way for a lot of things, too. You see the critics' ratings... And then the right. audience, and it's just polar opposites. Yeah. See, the audience is just unsophisticated, doesn't understand true yeah. art. <laughs> right. Well, you can even go to like places like Metacritic and look up like a review for a, like a game that didn't do well. Mm-hmm. Like, you just a, a poorly made game, and like you'll see like the critics' review will be really high, and all the audience reviews will be like, no, this game sucks. Because <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, you're like, oh yeah, they were definitely paid to say that. Yeah, that's because like uh, you know, they get the early access to the games, mm-hmm. I guess. And if you if you're like, wow, this sucks, this is right. awful. Do right. not buy this. They're not going to give you that game again. Right? No, that's uh, true. Makes sense. True. I know yeah. that happens to a lot of tech reviewers. Like when they get like the new phone from Google or Apple, they have like a, a list that Apple or Google sends them, and they have to do everything in the video. That's why all the tech review videos all sound the same, and they all say the same things. Like in sequence, like they talk about the battery life, they talk about the thing or whatever. It's got 16 new cameras. Yeah. They can see through your skull. Apple released their new laptops. Yeah. Like, people are getting them this week. Nice. And I follow the people who are like, okay, guys, I just spent $8,000 buying oh three goodness. different laptops so I can test them all out for you guys. Oh, wow. So those are the people I like to follow because yeah. they're really, they're honest. They yeah. buy the yeah. thing. They don't get it for free. Yeah. I just wish, like, a company like Apple that makes a really good computer and then like a tool company like DeWalt yeah. or Milwaukee to like collaborate and make Shoes. the coolest tool <laughs> computer ever, you know? That's, I, I think it's called the App Store. No, 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 no. Like, huh? Like have all the the batteries that plug into the computer oh. and the charging things and you you talking about like a worksite computer? Yeah, something like that that runs off of your Milwaukee batteries. <laughs> that sounds like a horrible idea. No, 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 that, no. that sounds I really mean, good. Yeah. When I think about it, I think that's kind of dumb, but that's kind of <laughs> cool, and I would want one of those. Wouldn't it be? Wouldn't it be cool? I don't uh, know yeah. because some of these yeah. batteries that they pull put in these little <laughs> drills, you know, like are what if, very sophisticated. What if like a company like like Ford or Mercedes make like a hamburger car, but it's like the mm-hmm. worst car ever. But why would you not want to own that? Sure. Like rich people. Can you eat it? No, it's you just, know, it's just in the shape of a hamburger or something. I don't know. I'm making this up. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's kind of, that's kind of like, how the gotta PT, have that. That's kind of how the PT cruiser started out. Did you know this? What it was, do? um, so when the market was crashing in 08, yeah, the housing market and just, you know, kind of different markets in general. Um, uh, Chrysler was really trying to come out with a new product. And now, listen, like, listen. I got to stop you there. The PTs were out before 08. Yeah. I remember seeing them in like 2005, 2006. Oh, I messed up. So like... It can't be the housing... It, but it, here... No, it was the... Sorry, sorry, sorry. It was the, uh, the, the turn of the century, the 2000s. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. that... Yeah, so a lot of car companies, that was big for a lot of car companies because they were coming out with a lot of new stuff. So Chrysler was looking for their next big thing right? to compete with, um, I think it was uh, the K-Car. Everybody loved the K-Car. What was the K-Car? Reliant K made a song about it. Yeah. yeah. But what is a K-Car? They, I don't was, even know it what was, it is. It was a super affordable automobile that had a big boxy front so you could work on it. It was super simple. It was just... It's a nice Reliant yeah. automobile. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, everybody liked it, but over time, everybody was like, this sucks because it's, it's a stupid looking car. <laughs> you know, it's just so bland. So Chrysler was like, all right, I'm going to give you something really good that nobody's ever seen before. They came out with a Prowler. So the Prowler was like 
almost like a beetle shaped looking car with the wheels were mm. kind of like outside of the oh yeah the yeah. thing and it was like a it was a roadster kind of car you know people were like whoa that looks like a race car or something but it had this dumb little engine in it it didn't go very fast so yeah. people were like what what's the point everybody was kind of excited but not too excited and then they finally came out with uh the uh, pt the, the ultimate the pt the ultimate the car. pt cruiser <laughs> and it was said to be america's <laughs> most favorite car Oh, yeah. Sure. Well, yeah, because yeah. it was so neat. They were like, we want to make it retro. We want to make it new. We want the kids to buy this. And we yeah. wanted it to look like a car that came out of, you know, like the the uh, the 40s or the 50s, yeah. man. Yeah. And then they slowly realized that no no kids wanted to buy it because kids don't they have weren't around. They weren't around in the 40s or 50s. It was all these old people <laughs> buying these cars. They're like, whoa, what's going it's on? Like, Wait a second. So all this these old is people. the wrong age group. <laughs> Yeah, so all these old people started buying up these PT Cruisers. And then it was actually one of the first cars to be put together completely in um, in a, a 3D, uh, whatchamacallit, with the, with the VR. Oh, really? Yeah. They totally assembled the whole car in virtual reality. Is that why it sucked? Well, they kind of overlooked a little flaw. They crammed everything in there. Every, every possible space they filled with this engine and uh everybody hated working on them because they were so tight they had like no yeah. clearance to work on them right then people got a little bit used to it and they're like all right they're still fun you know they're unique there was nothing on the, still is nothing on the road like a pt cruiser that's why everybody yeah. loved it and then people got older and they just hated it You're speaking oh, yeah. from experience. i know like car guys that were around back then and they were like oh oh Yes, that's hot. <laughs> oh, that's hot. Yeah, because it was. It, it was. America loved these cars. I remember they the hype. Sold like crazy. I remember the hype about them. Yeah, we we would do slug bug. Yeah, we punch each other slug bug. Slug well, that bug. Was, but, that was a, that was. A but bug. listen, Bolt if there target. if there was a PT cruiser next to the slug bug, it was extra oh, yeah. points. It was oh, cruiser nice. bruiser. Cruiser we, bruiser. We we did a slug bug. Uh why is everybody hitting each other with these cars? <laughs> well, it was, it was, but the PT Cruiser came out out of the factory with a flame decal. Really? No, no, you don't see other cars like that. You could no, buy it no. off the factory with a flame decal on it. It's great. It makes it go faster. That's right. Chrysler, where's the next big thing? Well, they just, they kind of got bought out by Fiat. And Fiat. Now they, now they make these dumb little smart mini cars. Okay, never mind. I'm, I'm not yeah. going to. Whatever, I'm, I'm giving up now. That could be my topic for today. To Was that honest. your topic? No, it wasn't, but, you know. Oh, Max gets two topics. I could. What were we talking about? Dave Chappelle? Yeah, Dave Chappelle. To PT. How do we get to PT Cruisers? I don't, I don't remember. We start talking about Max, and then... Well, like, yeah. Clay said something that, like, awakened a Max's soul. It did, and I just... Yeah. yeah. My, uh... Topic? We're talking about original. <laughs> mm-hmm. Let's go back. Let, let me educate you a little bit about birthdays and where birthdays come from. Oh, no. So this is... Are little, you about to ruin birthdays? Does yes, I will. Does I will. Uh, somebody's born? No. Maxwell. That's the thing that got me. It's Maxwell. not about a birth of somebody's birth. It's about their becoming a man? No. It's about their... Um, it's offerings to a pagan god? No. It's... Okay, so it all started with, you know, Greeks. Right. Is it the day they first watched Shrek? It's the day they got <laughs> kinged, or they had power. So Pharaoh, you know, back in biblical times. Back in the Greeks, Pharaoh. It, he, it was his birthday because they crowned him as Pharaoh, and he became God. So once he was crowned and had the authority, it was his birthday. Not because, not the day he was born, but, but the day he became God. The day of his the ascension. Day they started calling right. him. As God. Right. Yeah. So then... Um, Where did the Greeks come in? No, no, no. I'm sorry. I started with the Egyptians. Not oh, Egyptians. Okay. Cause yeah, yeah, yeah. The Egyptians. Because Pharaoh was an Egyptian, not a Greek. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Slight error there, but, you know, we're working on it. So how did it become my birthday? Um, let me get to that. Because, Isaac, the Egyptians worship you as a god. So when Egyptians... How come I don't get no money? <laughs> When Egyptian pharaohs were crowned in ancient Egypt, they were considered to have transformed into gods. This was um, a moment in their lives that has become more, more important than even their physical birth. 
Um, so you can thank Greeks for all those birthday candles because it was a tribute to um, the goddess Artemis. 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 So think about that, Christians. Think about that, Christians. Next time you light up a candle. <laughs> light up a candle. So as a tribute to her, the Greeks would offer up a moon-shaped cake adorned with candles to create the glowing radiance of the moon. That's okay. Just don't make it a moon cake. Uh, <gasps> they sell moon cakes still. Oh, no. You oh, can no, buy no. little Debbie moon cakes. Wait, what's a moon cake? Dude, they're not that great. <laughs> so pretty good. They're the like candles. Banana. I like banana, kind of creamy, yeah. kind of weird things. It's pretty okay. good. The candles also symbolize the sending up of a single prayer. Blowing out the candles with a wish is another way of sending that message to the gods. Um, to the little G's. Um, so birthdays first started as a form of protection. They, like many other pagan cultures, thought that the day of the days of major change, such as these birthdays, welcomed evil spirits. They lit candles in response to these spirits. This implies that the birthday celebration started as a form of protection. So they were afraid the evil spirits were going to come because I was born this day, right, so it's a because, special day for me. Because the uh, the the myth was that this spirit was born along with you. Okay. So they were like, okay, the, this is protection then, so they would light candles and stuff. And mm-hmm. they'd say, this is your birthday. We have to do this to protect you from... And they're like... And we also eat cake <laughs> and give presents and be very happy. <laughs> In addition to candles, friends and family would gather around the birthday person t- and protect them from harm with good cheers and thoughts and wishes. They would give gifts and bring even more good cheer that would ward off evil spirits. Noisemakers were also used to scare away the unwanted evil. The okay. fr- you know those little things. Oh come on! I'm serious. It all it all dates back to what they actually thought. Oh, you, know? you mean how those, does how do is call those noisemakers? They're yeah. they're called noisemakers. Oh, they're called noisemakers. Yeah. they're called noisemakers. I thought they were just called. I don't yeah, know. <laughs> Google that. That's what they're called. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so here this says the ancient Romans were the first to celebrate the birth of the common man. So I guess. Famous people and high ups got the birthdays. So, so what you're saying is the original birthday yeah. idea. Yeah, the original one was Pharaoh becoming a god. That was becoming his god. Ascension that was his. Day. Yeah. The next one was not celebrating your birth, but the birth of your spirit, and making sure no one snatches your spirit from you. Right. And now we're celebrating. Now I, I came out of my mom this day. No. Well, I guess you came out of your mom, and then there was a spirit, but it's now evil. And you want to protect yourself from that evil spirit. This is the new twist? No, that was the one I read before. You didn't catch that? Oh. So wait, so I'm born and the spirit that's born with me is evil? Yeah, and you're trying to protect from All it's trying to get me? Yeah. Ooh. Oh, that's terrifying. It would ward off evil spirits, you what know, if, by all these gifts and candles and stuff. What if it gets you? I don't know, man. I don't know. Do you like wrestle it? Maybe you should ask <laughs> Hitler. I, it's like a it's like a really greasy fat man. He's like, that's <laughs> wrestle. Regular Roman citizens would celebrate the birthdays of their friends and family members. The government, however, created public holidays in honor of more famous citizens. Yeah, like we do today. Yeah. Martin Luther's We don't celebrate his birthday. birthday. We don't celebrate his birthday. <laughs> Wait, whose birthday do we celebrate? Uh, we celebrate no one's birthday. Masha we do. Uh, we used to do that birthday. with the presidents, but... Didn't we? We have too many now, so now we have President's Day. Okay, any Roman turning 50 years old would receive a special cake baked with wheat flour, olive oil, uh, grated cheese, and honey. That sounds terrible. Yeah, <laughs> what if he doesn't like Bad cheese? Breakfast. He's like, I'm lactose intolerant. <laughs> well, buddy, then this is your last ever this birthday. Is your last <laughs> your evil spirit baby's going to come and snatch you today in your weakened oh, state. Oh, man. But an important thing to note is that only men would experience this birthday celebration because women don't have evil spirits that's with right them. that's right they're just evil <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say that. <laughs> oh we got canceled oh, dave boy. chappelle you're welcome on our show <laughs> hey we should get dave chappelle okay. hey get this birthdays were first considered to be pagan rituals in christian culture oh so in christianity it was believed that all all people are born with original sin that, in combination with early birthdays being tied to pagan gods, led Christians to consider birthdays to be celebrations of evil. 
This- Sorry, son. You're evil because you're a born evil. We're not going to celebrate your stupid life. <laughs> Go milk a cow. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> This lasted for the first few hundred years of the existence of the Christian church. It wasn't until the fourth century that Christianity abandoned that way of thinking and began celebrating the birth of Jesus, also known as Christmas. Celebrating the birth of Jesus was partly enacted to recruit those who already celebrated Saturnalia, the Roman holiday. So now it comes all the way back to Christmas. So so Christmas was a two-for-one deal? Yeah, they got so they're like we can't celebrate birthdays because they're pagan. We're like, what about the birth of Christ? Oh, let's celebrate Christmas, the birth of Christ, to get these Saturnalia people. And they go, well, if we're celebrating Christ's birthday, birthdays are evil. Remember, like we'll just make them good. Yeah. So now celebrating birthdays is it like is likened to celebrating the birth of Christ on Christmas, which has roots in in paganism in the Saturnalia. So, Interesting, huh? TLDR. Mm-hmm. These are all pagan. Let's do them anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, Max. So uh, that's what I had. That's what I had. That's what I figured out. So, what do you do on, 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 on the day you were born? When the anniversary comes around, what are you going to do? Nothing. I can do anything? Well, I don't really do anything special anyways. It's just. I mean, we usually have cake or like yeah, I guess presents. You, and Yeah, sure. I'll buy myself a hat, maybe. That's kind of nice. Yeah, that's kind of nice. I mean, uh, what was the, like, the pointy? Well, uh, here's, <laughs> you know, it, the cone you, hat. You buy a cone hat. What do you, what do you, what do you, well, I don't know. What are you KKK? Like, K- what are you talking about? <laughs> no, no, no. I'm talking pointy about hat? The cone, the cone hat. Like a the, wizard hat. With the little, the little cheap. Oh, a birthday thing. hat. You mean a birthday oh. hat? Yeah, they're called birthday hats. Oh, hat. a party they're hat. Birthday no, they're, hat. Hat. they're called party hats. Oh, like, party hats. I'm so sorry. That's right. What did people do? I mean, before... Well, in, in our day and age, we always know what day it is. Yes. So prior to the calendar, people just didn't care. They know it's hot outside. Well, they didn't have any way to track their age or, you know, they didn't have any reoccurring celebrations because yeah. they would just go off of, oh, that's this season now. They had, oh, yeah. There'd it's, be one no. guy in the town who keeps keep track of the date. He'll come out like, it is... Two Tuesday. days until the anniversary of the time that guy died on the hill. Right. Yeah. There's at least one dude in every town like that. Yeah, but yeah. then, you know, they came out with calendars and they actually tracked the stars and the moon and, you know, yeah. they they laid it out. And then, then they were like, oh, let's start marking historical days or let's start marking the day that some famous guy was, you know, pharaohed. Right. Well, I mean, even if that tradition wasn't invented... Yeah, I think as soon as people got calendars, start keeping track of days. I think you would naturally have a little party on the day of your birth. Well, it wouldn't have to be a party. It would just be kind of a recognition. Hey, I was born today. Oh it, wow, it, that's cool. We're gonna have a party. We're gonna like you go bring me a present. <laughs> 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 Why would you buy me something? I don't know. I just, I guess to me, knowing that I was born on a specific day doesn't hold that much importance to me. To be honest. If anything, I would probably like, oh, I should probably, you know, give my mom a gift or Talk something. Talk to my mom. Say, yeah, say, hey, hey mom, <laughs> uh, this past year's been really hard. Um, I got Can you, you give to- me money? <laughs> 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 you know, it is my birthday. Yeah, my, my birthday is the day remember you that, gave birth to me. Remember that night you stayed up all night in pain and just in a fetal position? Yeah, can you uh, and all those celebrate nurses, that and give me some money? All those nurses try to get you to sign all those papers as you were you were having contractions. and Right, story. and you literally almost died. <laughs> Great times. You know, bake me. Where's my cake? <laughs> can you make me, woman, make me cake. <laughs> See, I just, I just think it's kind of selfish, to be honest. So you just going to bring me a birthday gift on my birthday to my birthday party on my birthday with a birthday gift? Happy birthday. <laughs> that was good, Clay. Tan Pants presents Improv Pantry. On tonight's show, Martin, Jeb, and Lennon are bodyguards waiting outside of the hotel for their person they, they got a guard. <laughs> Martin's cracking his knuckles. 
Oh, that was good fully. Oh, wow. That's yeah. bad. That was real. <laughs> I'm hurting. Because that's all Martin's. <laughs> okay. Uh, Jeb has got his, uh, his kicking shoes on. I'm about to kick some rears. And Lennon has an autograph book hidden away in his jacket. Been waiting for years. His bodyguard. I've been waiting for years to get an autograph signature of this guy. You know, I took this job 10 years ago. For 10 years. No, not this guy. I've been going through all sorts of losers. But today's the day I get to guard the man. And that man is Larry the Cable Guy. Oh. You hear like a distant get her done. And get her done. <laughs> so I'm going to attempt a Larry the Cable Guy impression, but it's not going to be good. Okay. That's all right. We forgive you. That's okay. That's good. I will never forgive you. So uh, as you guys are waiting outside, you know Larry's finishing up inside, and uh, it's your guy's job to get him to his next venue across the street. Now, before you is just a massive... It's just across the street. It's across the street. It's just a massive throng of people. And all these Larry the Cable Guy fans... Uh, cosplaying Larry the Cable Guy. They're all guy. cosplaying Larry the Cable Guy. <laughs> <laughs> How are we going to know which one's the true Larry? And some of them are convincing. <laughs> one of them stepped up to you. He's like, get her done! <laughs> Another one's like, get her done! And one more is like, Get her done. <laughs> and then one more is like, Get her done. <laughs> one more is like, Jeff Foxworthy. And he gets attacked. Everyone attacks <laughs> <What>? him. <laughs> um, <laughs> the door is open behind you, and the swing open, and you smell beef jerky, mm. and you smell um, just motor oil. Motor oil, and just manliness. Right. Not bad manliness. Like, but like he's, he's cleaned up, like Old Spice or whatever. Just strong manliness. You can tell he okay. was chopping up some pine. He was chopping up some pine. You guys turn around and here comes Larry the Cable Guy strutting out. And everyone freaks out. What do you guys do? We do the thing where they're like, yeah, please, we, please. I put, I put my hand. some space. I put my hand on my ear. And I say, everybody, move. Uh, nobody moves. In fact, I... They, they get closer. They get closer. I, I point a gun to the air and shoot. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, Martin, give me a number between one and five. We have guns. Two. We only get... It was a three. You successfully scared the crap out of several <laughs> people. One guy's like, get it. Oh, shoot. <laughs> and he runs off. Larry the Caleb goes like, Whoa. Dude, all right. Boy, what are you doing? You know, we only get paid like seven dollars an hour. Where'd you get a gun? I found it. <laughs> well, shoot! Looks like you guys got a pretty good uh, situation going on out here. Right yep. this way, sir. Yep. Let's get, get let's get going fast. I only had one bullet. All right, here we go. <laughs> so, Larry, the cable guy is following you. So, uh, everyone has pretty much run away. Um, but in the commotion, you notice. Um, a man standing out in the crowd who's a little bit taller than everybody else. And he was unfazed by the gunshot. And it's he's Larry the Cucumber? <laughs> <laughs> it's me, Larry the Cucumber. I am here to avenge my name. To take it away from this pretender. <laughs> right. Wow. I sang silly songs for kids for years. It's now this guy comes up, does a couple of poop jokes, and everyone thinks he's great. No, it's not Larry the Cucumber. Oh. <laughs> uh. No, no, no. It's a, uh, it is a Karen. Oh, oh, boy. This Karen is staring you guys down. Yeah. And All you right. hear her call out, and uh, she's like, You're so offensive! You're offensive! Clay still has his... He's got, got one shot. <laughs> Clay, I'm joking. Clay has several <laughs> shots. Clay, how many bullets you got? <laughs> uh, I only had the one. Oh, or just man. the one. And uh, Larry, the cable guy, looks over at the Karen, and he goes... Oh, dang. And he kind of oh, gets dang. behind you guys. He's like, I know that one. She comes to every single show. She's like the, the pro heckler. She's like she's like a heckler's guy. She meant to be human. I think she's dead. I think she's a specter of a ghost. This might be a bad time, but can I please get your autograph? And Larry, uh, give me a number between one and five. Four. It's a four. Yeah. Larry goes, you know what? I have never once in my life refused an autograph. <laughs> 
but I don't have a pin with me. We'll have to get one at the hotel. I bet you Karen has one. If we go, she'll kill us. She'll eat our faces. Larry, for you, I'd do anything. Say the word. She's gone. I don't want you to kill her. Just say no, the word. I didn't say kill. I just, you know, I You're could safe just... with us. I have my rear kicking shoes. <laughs> okay, well, we may need we may need that boy. We may need a cut. Let's go get her done. Let's let's get across let's the street. <laughs> so uh, you guys are crossing the street, and this Karen's coming closer, <laughs> like a uh, like like a shark or something. What is her haircut like? Her haircut's like a Karen. Very short. She got the short with the spiky in the back, you know? Oh. Mm. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. And uh, she's... This is serious. She looks at you guys, and she says, um, uh, You need to apologize. You need to apologize to the world. You need to apologize for wearing those shoes, She girl. jumps on you. <laughs> she attacks... She oh jumps God. on your head. <laughs> so, Lennon, uh, this Karen, like, supernaturally... <laughs> Well, I, seven wow. feet in the air. My goodness gracious. And like Lord of the Rings pounces on you. Okay. Um, uh, I'm a security guard, right? Yeah. I have a taser. Um, sure. Yeah, you got, you got a taser. Yeah. All right. Taser. I have some pepper spray. Oh, yeah. You got pepper spray. I got all the gadgets. You got all the gadgets you, you want. You are Larry the Cable Guy's bodyguard. <laughs> you That's have right. I have everything. a freaking uh, samurai yeah, sword. Fishing hook. <laughs> fishing hook? I don't know. Larry the Cable Guy. <laughs> Larry the cable guy's like, I got some jerky. Yeah. Ma'am, I will warn you once and not twice. Once will be the warning. And you should leave now. Give me a number to one of five. Three. Five. Uh, she says, um, I'm going to talk to your manager. I say, and she Ma'am. grabs she grabs your beard, just starts pulling on your beard ah. from where she's crouching on your shoulders. If I tase her, I'll get tased. You will, but you'll be prepared for it. I'll take one for the team, Larry. I will I will suicide bomb into this oncoming traffic. Man. Just, well don't do that. Just give me give my autograph to my address. Oh okay. man, leave us alone. Or do not force me to Leave me no choice but to ask you again. <laughs> I gave me a number between one and five. Uh, three. Five. Uh, she jumps on you now. <laughs> yes, I'm free. We need she, to- she, she says, I'm, uh, don't talk to me, white male. <laughs> Wait, what race is this Karen? Uh, she's a white lady. Oh, right. All Karens are white ladies. Really angry. Not all. Ladies. Not all. Can I, can I kick all. her <laughs> off of me? Uh, give me a number. Uh, yeah. Four. To three. So, uh, I guess say you're able to hit her off you. Mm-hmm. Uh, how, how's that, what does that look like? She, well, she, I don't know. Probably something kind of shocking. <laughs> you, you do this crazy kick, and Karen's thrown off of you. She lands okay. Like yeah, she's, she's, she, she's not hurt. But Larry the Cable Guy sees it, and he, 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 he's like, Whoa, that's the coolest thing i ever done dead scene. Hey, Larry. Yeah. Can, I, can I? You got any more of that jerky? Oh, I got loads of jerky. All right. He like opens up his <laughs> his vest, and he's got jerky not in any pockets, but taped to his chest. <laughs> oh, and he man. goes, <laughs> he rips one off, and like a single t- single Larry tear. Wait, like it's like <laughs> it's like got some bear hair skin. On it. It's bear skin, but oh. uh, the the jerky's like individually wrapped. Oh, that's fine. And that's he good. hands you one. I I open it. I eat it. Okay, you you gain twenty experience. Nice. Hey, what? He's the first one to get experience in this game ever. Uh, so we probably have to get Larry inside before the show starts because I imagine it's pretty. Soon. I imagine we're taking a long time. Like, why don't we just? Cross we're just kind of dancing around the street at this point. He's just one Karen. Like the rest, of you guys can walk off while I know you're off. Yeah, this is like a Karen from hell. So yeah, I mean, maybe one or two of us should stay behind, but we need to get Larry in. Maybe uh, Martin should take Larry inside because they're the jerky buddies. Yeah. They seem cool as a cucumber, and Josh and I, or whatever your name is, Jeb, Jeb and I will attack this Karen. Okay, sounds good. So Like, m- like Paper Mario style. Oh, yes. Yep. What? Martin, give me number between one and five. One. It was a five. No, come on. <laughs> okay, Martin. so Martin, what is your strategy for getting Larry to the venue? Straight line, uh, pretty much. I was just gonna walk him over while he, they were distracted. 
Okay, so um, they're distracting Karen. Karen's spitting mad, and you grab Larry by the elbow, like a good bodyguard. Uh, what is there anything you say to Larry before you walk off? All right, let's go, Larry. Let's just leave him. <laughs> Larry goes. Well, okay. It looks like they know what they're doing. And you guys start walking across. And the crowd's parting for you for the most part. But then this gray van Uh-oh. pulls up, like, drives through. Everyone's jumping out of the way. They don't want to get hit. People almost get hit, but no one gets hit. And the van screeches to a stop in front of you. The door opens, and a guy in a mask, like a ski mask, leans out, grabs Larry by his vest, and pulls him in the van and slams it up and starts to drive away. I don't let go. You don't let go? Yeah. Okay, are you in the van too? And I'm like hanging on to a piece of his vest. Oh, okay. Outside of the van. So Martin is dealing with this. So what are you guys doing with the Karen? We just leave her. <laughs> so, hey, uh, Karen, I have a skateboard. <laughs> Look at me. I'm on a park bench with a skateboard. You should need a permit to do that. That's right, and guess what? I'm also going to film you. How dare you? How dare you? She gets right up in your face with her long, pedicured fingernails. And she's like, I voted for a thing that would stop people from doing what you're doing. It didn't pass, but I voted for it. And it's going to come again, and I'm going to get more of my Karen friends to vote on it this time. And you're going to go down, mister. You're going to go. You're. I mean, God will punish you. You know what? Demonic. <laughs> you know what? You know what? Demonic. <laughs> You're demonic. <laughs> oh, that's so accurate. <laughs> that's pretty good. Okay. I feel insulted. Uh, but she she is successfully <clears throat> distracted. Um, I'm gonna say you have her on the ropes. Once okay. she once she pulls out demonic, there's no else <laughs> she can really Yeah, that's go. pretty much it. Is right. there anything else? Like, uh, Josh, what's your finishing move here? What's your Verbal finishing move to this game. <laughs> My verbal finishing move. I'm gonna let you have it. I was like, we'll see you later, Karen. I'm gonna go see Joe. Joe who? Joe Mama. Oh! oh! She oh! she gets so angry, her face turns purple. <laughs> she gets scratched. And then she, Ooh. She vanished because she was a was specter of a ghost, Mama. just like Larry said. Just like Larry said. Wow. Now we got to go save Larry because he's being kidnapped by Ski Man. So as you guys are watching this, you hear the commotion behind you, the, the car, the van horn honking, and it's still a big crowd. You know, so this van is going very fast, and Martin's like tailing behind it, hanging on to the <laughs> vest of the door. What do you I guys do? shout to the crowd, if you are true followers of this man... Jump on that van. <laughs> Give me a number between one and five. Five. It was a three. No, come on. So That's most of them was like, most of them like, no way, man. We, that other guy tried to shoot us or something. <laughs> he tried to kill us. But there's like a, one or two true Larry the Cable guy. Yeah. But they're not cosplayers. They're, oh, I was hoping for an exact lookalike. They're not cosplayers. <laughs> They are uh, people who just naturally look <laughs> like Larry the Cable Guy. Perfect. They're not, but they're not in cosplay. All right. No. Uh, they're like, Larry gave me hope. Because if a man looking like him can be as fabulous <laughs> and eat as much <laughs> antacid as <laughs> He does his antacid commercials. I eat that stuff all the time. And there's like 20 of them. They're at, they're at your command. Whoa. They're, That's right. they're at your command right now. Uh, the van is almost at the edge of the crowd. Okay, so here's what we do. I need half of them to say, get her done. And I need the other half to say, get her done, but just slightly out of sequence. So that it sounds like an unbalanced engine. Chorus. Get her done's. Okay, they they do exactly that. The and shockwave. The, the air trembles. <laughs> yes. And the bowels of everyone around you... <laughs> They don't. They don't fail. But everyone <laughs> feels it. No, I was hoping the the sound wave would be so deep that it would actually throw off the timing of the timing belt and the engine, and the whole uh, engine would explode. Okay, give me a number to one and ten. Ten. Yeah, this is this is this is very he said it, very he said specific. Ten. He said ten. No, 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 no. Seven. It was a seven. Yes. What? Uh, yes. 
That's what I'm talking about. That's how Whoa. we play this game. All right. So, um, the, uh, describe this, because uh, I don't know what you're talking about exactly. I know there's a belt and an engine that spins, but... The Get Her Done um, chorus <laughs> is going just slightly off balance. The resonance. The resonance. And it is hitting the road. The asphalt is just trembling with this resonance, and it hits the car's tires right where it connects with the residence and it shakes the whole thing and the engine just it feels the humming of the getter duns and the, <laughs> the belts just start turning and they get all jingled up and then the getter duns get inside their air conditioning and then it just <laughs> and that's all they can hear drives them insane and then all of a sudden smoke and then explosions and sparks and then boom the whole van is just you know it's, it's actually broken down on the side of the road because it overheated well, I was thinking, like, the whole car is vibrating in motion, except for Larry the Cable Guy, who is the essence of the Getter Done. So he is no longer material of the truck. So he <laughs> has no longer um, inertia from the truck. <laughs> he and he flies out the back. He phases through, like, the metal? And, yes. Like, like a ghost? Yes. Dude. This is good. Okay, so uh, like this. Martin, yeah. you, you you see him kind of fly out the back, and, uh, like like Larry the Cable Guy, Zen Genie, but Larry, he's not coordinated. He lands on the ground and like tumbles. He's like, wow, no! get her done. He said, what the heck is going on? <laughs> He, he gets up like, listen, y'all, I was in Cars too. That was the most messed up thing I've ever seen. It was beautiful. And all the Larry the Cable guys get around and, like, lift him up. And, like, Larry, Larry. And he's like, yeah, get her done. They start taking him, like, away from the venue, though. And he's like, whoa, whoa, wait. Bodyguards. <laughs> so he looks at you guys. We just have to start shooting people. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only solution. I say, hey. Don't make me use my gun. So they were intimidated by that last that by the last shot. I'm gonna say give me number two, one and three. Wow, you got all the easy ones. Two. There's a three. So um most of them go. That only had one bullet anyway. But the true Larrys, the Larrys who were Larrys themselves, the two hundred right. Larrys. They do one final get her done. Joining hands. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> <laughs> and the get her done is so harmonized <laughs> that all the other Larrys like blow away. Like remember, like in Lord of the Larrys. Rings, when the ring is cut off the guy's finger and that shock wave, yeah, hits all the orcs. It's like that. Okay. Wow. And Larry's floating in the middle of it. He's like, whoa, it's because he is no longer material. He's so. again not material, but uh-huh. he floats down to the ground. And then uh, all the Larrys yeah. kind of gather around him. And then they look at you guys and they, they say, we'll take it from here. And they all walk into the next video. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Well, that's we it. just lost our jobs. <laughs> or maybe we just got promoted. No, we did a good job. But then as, as Larry's going away, he goes, oh, wait a minute. And he like, he borrows a pen and he writes down his autograph. Yes. And he goes, he folds it. He goes, Catch this. And he throws it. Give me a number between one and ten. No. <laughs> one and what? One and ten. <laughs> it's a small airplane. Four. It was a three. Yes! I so did you it. Uh, you try to grab it. It's like almost in reach. It like flies right past your ear and Jeb grabs it. Hey. <laughs> Jeb, what, what, what do you do with it? I give it to him because I'm a good man. Yes. And on the autograph it says, in Larry's voice, eat ribs every day. Larry the Cable Guy. XO. I'm a believer now. And that concludes Improv Pantry. <laughs> that was uh, PewDiePie. quite the collection of circumstances that equaled something beautiful. There's another story that I heard about that is almost as amazing as that one. So, come back with me to the Spanish Civil War. Spanish Civil War. <clears throat> okay. This is like right. the 1920s mm-hmm. in Spain. There was a guy named uh, Juan Piojol Garcia. Juan. 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 All right. 
and uh, he was running a a chicken farm. Yeah, and then uh, so Spain was in two camps, two sides. One side called? was like communism is great. Mm-hmm. Other side is fascism is great. Oh, and um, he was on the fascism land, and he got conscripted into the army, and it, he hated it. And he's like, you know what? I'm going to go join the other side. Maybe they're better. So he goes yeah. over the communist side. They're just as bad. Mm-hmm. Okay. So he fought both sides. So he said later, he's like, he was proud to have served both armies, not shooting a shot for either of them. Well, what did he do? Basically just deserted twice. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So um, I just ran. He I just sh- ran away. I said, shoot these guys. And I just said, we'll see you later, I say. That's Actually, basically what he did. Actually, he was the lunch lady. Ah, uh, he was. Uh, he was part of the cavalry at one point, but he hated horses, and he wasn't good at horses. <laughs> and horses didn't like him. He's like, I'm good with chickens. I can't do horses. So uh, I guess this is fresh in his mind because the Spanish Civil War ended, and uh, World War II was starting up. Wow. And uh, he had experience with communism. He had experience with fascism. He kind of knew both ideologies pretty good. And he saw over there in Germany what's going on and in Russia what was going on. And he was like, you know what? Last time I was caught between those two, now there's a third option. I can be with the Allies. He's like, I wonder if I could help out somehow. And so Juan did nothing. Juan had an idea. He said, you know what? I bet... Because I was part of the fascist party here in Spain. I bet I could contact some Germans and say, hey, I was part of the fascist movement. I want to be a double A. I want not double agent. I want to be a spy for you guys in Britain. But in reality, he'll be working for the British. He wants to be a double agent. Right. Wait, 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 wait. He joined the Allies and then he got in contact with the Germans. No. He he was he was just a dude with his chicken farm thinking. Oh, okay. He's yeah. like, I have history with the fascists. I know how they think. I could pretend to join the Germans, and be a be a, a bad spy on purpose for them. Mm, okay. He he uh, he approached the British embassy in Madrid, but they kept rejecting him. Like, nah, we don't want to work with you. Nah, we don't need your help. Nah, you're fine. And uh, so it was like, fine, I'll do it myself. Whoa, whoa. How? He did, he did what Bowser never would have thought of. <laughs> <laughs> uh, therefore, he resolved to establish himself as a German agent before approaching the British again to offer his services as a double agent. So he said, first, I'm going to go ahead and become a German agent. Then I'll go talk to them. Then they'll accept me. Mm-hmm. Uh, he created an identity another identity, as a fanatically pro-Nazi Spanish government official who could travel to London on official business. He also obtained a fake Spanish diplomatic passport by fooling a printer into thinking he worked for the Spanish embassy in Lisbon. Okay. Then, in Madrid, he found the local cell where there were German sympathizers. Ah. And he met a guy codenamed uh, Frederico. And he told him, hey, I'm a businessman. I go to London all the time. I bet we can work together. And that guy was like, you know what? I accept you. So he gave him a crash course in espionage, including how to do secret writing. He gave him a bottle of invisible ink, a code book, and 600 pounds for expenses. Well, it's like national treasure, man. Yes, it gets It gets better. It gets way better. Whoa. So his instructions were to move to Britain and recruit a network of British agents. So he was supposed to go and make more of him, basically. But instead, he moved to Lisbon and created bogus reports about Britain from a variety of public sources, including a tourist guide to Britain, train timetables, cinema newsreels, and magazine advertisements. Wow. Well, that's like useless. Almost useless. <laughs> Although his information wouldn't withstand close examination, he soon established himself as a trustworthy agent, and he began inventing fictitious sub-agents who could be blamed for false information and mistakes. (laughs) Uh Aha. 
Ja, ja, oh, is hey. het ja, uh, uh, that was Marco. It, it was, was Marco. Yeah. Oh, you don't know Marco? It was Jake from State Farm. Jake from State Farm. <laughs> In fact, he was so good at making stuff up for the Germans that when his reports were intercepted by the British Ultra Communications Interceptions Program, the, wow, they seemed so credible that the British Counterintelligence Service launched a full-scale spy hunt. Aha, uh-huh. so like, they're spying for the guy that's we making gotta, fake we, stuff. We gotta spy, we gotta find this guy. But wait, wouldn't, wouldn't they see the message? Who's seen the message? Well, the British guys. If they intercepted his stuff and they were on, you know, on well, a hunt well, for him. Well, the way that they intercepted it, uh, they knew where the Germans had a drop. Oh, so okay. there was a post office drop where he would send in his message to the post office. <laughs> so they didn't, they didn't know he was just sending useless information. They knew he was sending information. They're like, this isn't that good information, but it is information that we don't right. really have. Okay. Uh, the Allies uh, finally accepted him when the Germans spent considerable resources attempting to hunt down a fictitious convoy that he made up. <laughs> so he's just he's just making them run in circles. And yeah, in circles. So they weren't able to find him, the, uh, the spy hunt. Just like the chickens. Just like the chickens. Ah. So... Um, when 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 America joined the uh, the war efforts, uh, his wife was like, "You know what? The British embassy didn't accept us. Maybe the American embassy will." So he goes to the American embassy. He's like, "Look, I have been working as a double agent. Uh, I have contacts in Germany. Here's some stuff I've done. Uh, I'd like to join officially your effort." And they're like, "Yes." So he spent the rest of the war expanding his fictitious network communicating to the German handlers first by letters and later by radio. Eventually, the Germans were funding a network of agents that were all fictitious. And he spent wow. the money on gumballs. All of it on gumballs. So uh, MI5 teamed him up with a man named Thomas Harris, and together they made a lot of trouble for the Germans. Uh, together they wrote 315 <laughs> letters, averaging 2,000 words each, addressed to a post office box in Lisbon, Supplied by the Germans. His fictitious spy network was so efficient and verbose that his German handlers were overwhelmed and made no further attempts to recruit any additional spies in the United Kingdom. Wow. What? He did such a good job. They're like, we don't need any more. This guy's got it handled. Wow. Uh, the information supplied to the German intelligence was a mixture of complete fiction, genuine information of little mil- military value, and valuable military intelligence artificially delayed. So he would send them made-up things, true things that weren't important, and very important things that were just a little bit too late. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, in November 1942, just before Operation Torch Landings in North Africa, uh, his agent on the River Clyde, his agent, agent, reported that a convoy of troop ships and warships had left port, painted and painted and Mediterranean camouflage. While the letter was sent by airmail and postmarked before the landings, it was deliberately delayed by the Spanish, by the British intelligence in order to arrive too late to be useful. Uh, he received a letter, a reply from the Germans saying, um, we are sorry that uh, your message arrived too late, but your last reports were magnificent. Mm-hmm. It was so useless, but... Keep it up. Yeah. It good. So, in response to Germany's request for speedier communication, <clears throat> yeah, uh, he and Harris created a fictitious radio operator. Oh wow! Wow. And then from August 1943, radio became the main method of communication. Uh, on occasion, he had to invent reasons why his agents failed to report on easily available information. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Uh. For example, he reported that his fabricated Liverpool agent had fallen ill just before a major fleet movement from the port, so he was unable to report the event. See, that would just be so so fishy, though. Uh, to support the story, the agent eventually died, and an obituary was placed in the local newspaper. Oh, wow. As okay. further evidence to convince the Germans. So he was clever. The Germans were also persuaded to pay a pension to the agent's widow. No. <laughs> that's, that's terrible. It gets better. In January 1944, the Germans told him that they believed a large-scale invasion in Europe was imminent and asked to be kept informed. This invasion was Operation Overlord, D-Day. Oh, wow. And so he was like, we need to uh, find a way to make this as confusing as possible for them. 
So they made another operation that went alongside Overlord called Operation Fortitude. Mm. He sent over 500 radio messages between January 44th and D-Day. At times, more than 20 messages per day. Oh, so he just bombarded them. He bombarded them with information. Mm -hmm. And during planning for the Normandy beach invasion, the Allies decided it was vitally important that the German leaders were misled into believing that the landing would happen at the Strait of Dover. Okay. Okay. In order to maintain his credibility, it was decided that Juan, or one of his agents, should forewarn the Germans of the timing and some details of the actual invasion of Normandy, although sending it too late for them to take any effective action. Okay. Special arrangements were made with the German radio operators to be listening through the night of uh, the 5th of June, using a story that the sub-agent was about to arrive with important information. However, when the call was made at 3 a.m., no reply was received from the German operators until 8 a.m., so they were asleep. Ah. Uh, this enabled him to add more genuine but now out-of-date in information to the message when they finally got it, and in it increased his standing with the Germans. Uh, he told his German contacts that he was disgusted that his first message was missed, saying, I cannot accept excuses or negligence. Were it not for my ideals, I would abandon the work. Then on the 9th of June, three days after D-Day, uh, he sent a message to the German intelligence that was passed to Adolf Hitler and the German high command. What? Wow. He said he had conferred with his top agents and, de and developed an order of battle. So he talked with his top agents and he figured out that there were 75 divisions in Britain. In reality, there's only about 50. And part of the fortitude plan was to convince the Germans that a fictitious formation of U.S. Army soldiers compromising 11 divisions or about 150,000 men commanded by George Patton was stationed in Southeast Britain. The, de the deception was supported by fake planes, inflatable tanks, and vans traveling around ah, the area transmitting... He, was, he, he did the inflatable tank. He was he did, the inflatable, he was inflatable tank guy. guy. Wow. Okay. All right. Yeah. He also had vans driving around uh, transmitting bogus radio chatter. Okay. Uh, his message pointing out that the units from this formation had not participated in the invasion, and therefore the first landing of Nide should be considered to be a diversion. Oh, uh, wow. Because this was the true army that was going to come in. Yeah. Uh, a German message sent to Madrid two days later said, all reports received from, uh, they called him Arabel. All, okay. res all reports received from Arabel. Uh, have been confirmed without exception and are described to be especially valuable. Uh -huh. So they took whatever he said as gospel. Wow. A post-war examination of German records found that during Operation Fortitude, no fewer than 62 of his reports were included in German high command intelligence summaries. My goodness. Wow. Um, the Germans, through it all, paid him... Uh, 340,000 American dollars to support his network of agents, at which point totaled 27 made-up people. <laughs> <laughs> so they didn't even know the, them, like, in person. No. They, they it was just, it was just one dude making up all this stuff for the Germans. Oh, my, oh my goodness. goodness. That's awesome. Uh, from the Germans, he was awarded the Iron Cross <laughs> for his service to the German war effort. Uh, this award was reserved usually for frontline men, yeah. and it required Adolf Hitler's personal authorization. No way. Huh. Yes. So it was, it was pretty high up. Pretty, pretty high, high up. up. And he was also uh, declared a member of the Order of the British Empire by King George VI. The Nazis never realized they were fooled, and uh, he earned the distinction of being one of the few, if not the only one, to receive decorations from both sides during the World War II. Wow. wow. Uh, but after the war, uh, he started. He was afraid that uh, Nazis would find out about this and want him dead. Yeah. So, um, with the help of MI5, uh, he traveled to Angolia and faked his death. <laughs> might that's, as well. That's, might as well. I, I mean, that's, <laughs> that's probably the way. Then he do moved it. to Venezuela, where he lived in uh, relative secrecy, running a bookstore and gift shop. Nice, fantastic. So where nobody will believe him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he lived there uh, 
almost the rest of his life. He died in 1988, but in uh, 1971, there was a British politician by the name of Rupert uh, Allison mm -hmm. uh, writing under a pen name who became interested in uh, this guy. So during the war, uh, his code name was Garbo. Garbo. So whenever they talk about him in official reports, it's, it's Garbo. So Juan. Juan was Garbo. Juan was Garbo. Okay. And so he was always... Wait, to the British people he was Garbo? To the Allies. Oh, to mm -hmm. the Allies. So he was always he was reading in these reports, Garbo did this, Garbo did that. Because okay. they want to keep him secret. So it's like, who's this Garbo guy? Because we never honored him. Yeah. He, he, was, he was given an award, but I mean, who, where is he now? And uh, for several years, he interviewed various former intelligence officers, but no one knew Garbo's real name. But eventually, uh, he met a guy uh, who was a friend of the Thomas Harris, the guy who helped him out. Uh -huh. uh, but he met Garbo and knew him as either Juan or Jose Garcia. And Allison's investigations was stalled from that point until March 1984, when a former officer who had served in Spain supplied uh, Juan's full name. Then he hired a research assistant to call every... J. Garcia, an extremely common name in Spain, <laughs> in the Barcelona phone book until he found him. Wow. Uh, he, they eventually found his nephew, and uh, he finally met the guy in New Orleans on May 20th, 1984. Wow. And uh, at his urging, uh, Juan traveled to London and was received by Prince Philip at Buckingham Palace. After that, he visited uh, the Special Forces Club and was reunited with a lot of his old army buddies. And then on the 40th anniversary of D-Day, the 6th of June, 1984, Juan traveled to Normandy to take a tour of the beaches and pay his respects to the dead. Wow. Then he died in uh, Caracas in 1988. And he's currently buried in Choroni, a town inside uh, Henry Pitter National Park by the Caribbean Sea. Wow. So that the more pretty interesting. <laughs> the moral of the story is, if they won't let you be a spy... Just become a spy. Be a spy. You know those Do memes it. were like, be yourself unless you can be Batman. Yeah. This guy basically decided to be Batman. So he kind of like did Juni Cortez, Spy Kids 3. He's like, I'm a private investigator. That's what he did. He did a Spy Kids 3 before Spy yeah. Kids 3 was a thing. Yeah. But the thing was he like sent him some real stuff and like got him hooked. And I'm sure they were begging for information. You know? Yeah. Because uh, back then, I mean... I information saw, was key, I and mean, it still is now. But the way I figured out about this guy was, uh, I saw a YouTube video. Uh, it was called uh, "The Man Who Single Handedly Won World War II. The guy doing the video uh, was really long, and it took a long time for him to say anything. And so I just looked it up myself. I was like, okay, what's this guy about? Oh, so that was Juan. That was him. Yeah. Wow. Garbo. Garbo, Garbo the spy. So if you search Garbo the spy, it's, that's this guy. Hey, Garbo. Several. <laughs> uh, Movies have almost been made. There are a couple of documentaries about him. Um, are uh, we sure he's dead? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I'm thinking he was murdered. You think so? Because he was discovered in 1984 and died four years later. Uh, in 1980. Yeah, I was thinking about that. You were like, so he like, died in 1988, and I was like, and you said 1984. I'm like, that's kind of close. That is very close to him coming that's out of close. hiding. So I'm, I'm wondering if maybe some, some bad dudes didn't like him. Maybe. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, the Germans. Because, I mean, he single-handedly made sure that it was impossible for the Germans to get any information that was good from Britain. Yeah. Because he did such a good job in impressing them, they didn't bother setting up any other spy networks. Right. Yeah, they were like, he's all we need. I mean, look at all the information he's given us. Adolf Hitler himself was like, yeah, I gave that guy the cross. That guy's doing good. Wow. That's in 1984, crazy. when the Germans found out, we've been tricked, we've been backstabbed, and we've been quite, quite possibly, possibly bamboozled. bamboozled. <laughs> <laughs> quite possibly bamboozled. The News with Josh Anderson. The News. Talking about espionage, there's an uh, art-making robot. They, Why uh, would I care about an art making robot? It was um I do. Clay does. Egyptian officials detain artist robot on suspicion of espionage because it has cameras on its eyes. Listen, Egypt, I know that you think you're very important. <laughs> but I, I think <laughs> no one's trying to spy on it's you. It's probably true. 
Uh, I mean, it could be. I mean, you thought it was. You think it's a spying robot? It could. It could be a spying robot. Guys, wait. No? This has technology. It's a spy. The cameras. There's cameras. What is it going to see? Are they going to pass important <laughs> documents by the art making robot? Right by its face. <laughs> what is it seeing? Like, he says, where, Harry, hand me those How codes to the nuclear launch. And, and he's handing it. Yes. A, Harry. <laughs> we're Egypt. Not for the robot. We're Egypt. We need to make sure that our secret nukes that we definitely have <laughs> Dude, <laughs> are known by anyone. They got, they got the pyramids. They can shoot lasers oh, yeah. right out of the top. Right they they can fly. It's just how it yeah. works. The whole thing lifts out of the ground. And uh, do you have anything on how the robot made art, or is that it? It's like a robot. It's got hands. It has like a lady face. <laughs> Lady's it has face? this uncanny looking, realistic uh, lady head. Who who made it's the a robot? cyborg? I don't okay, know. so it'd does be the a robot. lot cooler if it was just like a a big arm with a pen. <laughs> yeah. It's a it's a, it's like an android looking thing. Yeah, kind of. Does it make good art, or does it just do scribbles? Well, it, it looks, looks pretty like good. I mean, it look yeah. I mean, I wouldn't call it. I mean, it's art. It's good. It's abstract. is it just a printer with an arm? I, yes. I mean, it's it not probably actually just be a printer. You just give it a JPEG and it'll. It's make not it actually it. making art. It's just following a program. But okay, it has I arms. Was, yeah. So I'm, I'm just, guessing it probably uses the brush or whatever. I just looked at Josh's computer at the picture of the robot with the painting and some yeah. old dude standing next to it. Um, this does not look like a robot. <laughs> I was thinking robot with lady face. This is a lady with robot arms. Yeah, that's what it more looks like. Hmm. Yeah. Anyway, Michigan man running from cops gets lost in woods, and he calls 911 for help. Uh, you, you have to know when you're beat. <laughs> this Gotta know like, when to hold hey, them. Hey, guys. Uh, remember that guy you were chasing? He's like, yeah, that Michigan man. Yeah, that's, that's me. I'm, I'm lost. I'm lost. <laughs> I'm ready to come in now. You promised not to let me die of cold. It's cold. <laughs> I don't want to die of cold. I'm alone. I'm, I'm hungry. rather go to prison for a couple of years. What was he? Uh, what was he in trouble with? What do you do? I could read the article. But it was probably marijuana stuff. Probably, probably drugs. I don't know. It's like, are yeah. there snacks in prison? It's I could go for snacks. Actually, really yes. There's, there's right lots now. of snacks in prison. Actually, <clears throat> you'll you'll eat yeah. good. You'll eat fine. Anyway, it won't be great, but Japan. Yes. That's it. <laughs> That's the Japan, whole article. Japan seeks to use. Hold on. Japan seeks to use jail time as punishment for uh, angry comments online. What? For online insults. So I, I was at a Panera Bread, and it sucked. Except <laughs> that was in ten years. On a Japan. They say you get ten site. years. Put that man in jail. But it says they're seeking, so it's not like. That's no. dumb. Yeah, that's dumb. You need yeah. to be able to say whatever you want. It's called free speech, yeah. and we have it in America all the time. Probably. Except for Dave Chappelle. <laughs> oh, yeah, shut up, idiot. <laughs> Driver yep. in Burlington. See? Wait, is Burlington, is that England? You know, Burlington Code Factory. Burlington. Oh, it's in southern <laughs> yeah. Canada. Driver in Burlington caught playing flute with both hands. He was driving with a flute. He had two flutes. <laughs> <laughs> he was driving, and the cops just, pull him over. Imagine it, Carol. Aha! Red handed! Gotcha! I <laughs> knew that was you! <laughs> he, Wait, imagine he the cops pass. <laughs> okay, imagine they're like, I hate flutes! If I hear one more flute! And then the guy just drives by. <laughs> yeah. Wow. He was caught in a red light playing his flutes with both hands. Oh, it's a red light! He, yeah. can yeah. he continued driving. Oh, with okay. The both the flutes. Well, he just got can, really into it. He got really. He <laughs> was, was he like the flutes? I've Using had his legs to drive. I've had know. I've had a bowl of cereal and steered with my knees. You did? No, you didn't. Yeah, dude. Yeah, I've done that. Really? How'd, yeah. it, how'd it go? It's a little difficult. <laughs> but you can do it. A small town in India, Indiana. Oh, well, I, I said that wrong. That's Hold different, on. Joshua. A small town in Indiana is offering people five thousand dollars. And a grandparents on demand service to move there. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang a on. grandparents on demand. So hang on. Demand. Whoa, 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 whoa. We'll so give you get five thousand dollars and some grandparents. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so does this mean Indiana they have a large population of old people who are like, oh, hey, none of our kids had it, children. The We're town, going. You're the town going. Is less than ten square miles, and the county is offering to pay people five thousand dollars to live in the town. As well as about $2,000 worth in gift cards to local businesses 
and a year-long membership to the local co-working space in YMCA. Which is just a parking lot and the right. Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> the town, which is home to a population of about 12,000, plans to help remote workers with ch- child care through Grandparents on Demand program. The that sir- sounds like such a bad is idea. It, is it just one? Like, is it one <laughs> grandparents no, that serves everybody? They have, they have, Grandpa a, they have Joe. a legion of grandparents. Listen, it's, it's, it's like Uber, but with grandparents. <laughs> I was, let's see who my grandparents are this time. Granddad's out smoking drunk again. <laughs> Granddad's sleep. He, we keep watching the movie. He keeps falling asleep during the movie. One of the testimonials is like, I am willing to be a grandma to anyone's child who needs that person in their life. I'm sorry. I That's mean, just weird. I so guess. Like grandma saying that. She also said, sorry, our grandma. community is just really warm and welcoming. To the people, and I just want to come here and feel good about the choice that they made. It's like, wait, how long do you have to stay? I don't know. This could you just like watch show up, get take the money, dollars, leave? Because five thousand dollars is not enough money to buy a house. <laughs> you just say <laughs> that's right. <laughs> <laughs> the grandma says, "I'm willing to be a grandma to anybody who needs a grandma." He's like, "All right, grandma, but you it's get all right. 2000, we already have a get, Walmart. You get two thousand dollars worth of local business gift cards. We got a." The gravel yard. <laughs> you could pick up a truckload of pebbles. From pebbles. With your grandpa. <laughs> grandpa on demand. Grandparents on demand. I can't think of a dumber idea. I know, right? That probably makes okay money. <laughs> it's not going to last very long. I would bet you who's moving down. If some people like, here's our children. Here's our kids. Grandparents on demand. Wait, does this cost money? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Wait, hold on. Wait, do I have to take care of the grandparents or do they take care of me? Oh, that's very important to figure out. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like Grandparents on demand, sucker. You have to take care of these old people now. I mean, do the grandparents come to my house and just hang out in my house? Yeah. You got any snacks? Because, I mean, that that's a little frightening. Kind of creepy, you know? Just, come on, make grandpa a sandwich. No. <laughs> Get out of my house, please. Do I drive them off at the grandparents' house? <laughs> what is this? Come on, kid. You know I can't drive. <laughs> Oh. oh man, this, this this sounds fishy, Joshua. Listen, just yeah. call it a babysitting service. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us on another episode of Tan Pants. We hope you liked it. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, leave a comment, share yeah. with your friends, and don't forget to thank our legendary Patreons, the Big Tyne, Navin Junior, and Mister E. Mister E is my favorite. Mister E. He's the mystery. He's he, I mean, he's fine. He's pretty good. I mean, he's a good guy. If you want to become patrons as well, you can do that. I'm sure there's a way. I don't know yeah, how to do uh, it. <laughs> there's probably yeah, a way to do that. It's the probably link. a user friendly kind of. They probably thought it out or something. I bet they had like nah. experiments no, to find mean, out the best way to do it. I mean, it's not the best website. You need like it's a pigeon, slow. and you got to send your credit card with the pigeon. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, you may see it back. Follow us on Twitter at Tan Pants. That's Tan underscore Pants. Tan underscore Pants. That's probably the easiest way to connect with us. Probably. Ask okay. us questions and we'll answer them. I am very I good mean, at we, answering questions. We, so far, we've answered every single three of them. <laughs> Isaac, answer me a question. Okay, Maxwell. Um, where do you, uh, Tell me what the earliest version of the sock was. All the time. The, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I was expecting that All discussion. The time. Thank you again for joining us. You guys have a good rest of your day. Bye. Bye. Bye.